Yay! Welcome back! I'm sorry it's been a long time. Work and life has just been so busy, but it's been good! Today, what we're going to do is we are going to model a park bench. Well, a park table. A wooden table at a park. Here, here it is, here it is. I saw this at work and I was like, wow, that's a really cool table. You know what this table needs? A model of itself. So, that's what we're going to do. We are going to model this park bench in Fusion 360. And we're going to do something we haven't done before. We're going to make a drawing and that drawing is going to have a parts list or bill of materials, uh, you might call it. So, it's going to be exciting. Let's get to it. Let's go. Whoa, I forgot how wide this table I made is. <laughs> it's way wider than it should be. Maybe when we model it up, it'll be a bit more chunky as the table was intended to be. Ah, so here we have the 3D model. And uh, it's not just a multi-solid body model. We uh, actually have components in here. So there we've got the middle plank and then we've got our, um, uh, parts in here. So other components. So here we've got standard plank, but rather than having four separate standard planks, we have uh, the same standard plank four times. And that's going to be relevant later when we do our bill of materials. Um, so here we go this is the general design. We've got some, I don't know, table terminology. Cross planks, cross beams. Anyway, we've got beams, lots of them. Uh, and then later we'll come along and we'll make a drawing. And that drawing is going to have a parts list in it. And it's going to have bubbles that will point to those uh, parts. And it will also have quantity of those parts. It's a very, very exciting time to be in the table modeling industry. Okay, let's do it. We'll start off by coming to show data panel. And we, uh, well, forgetting that, we'll navigate to our folder and we'll go ahead and we'll click File, New Design. Okay, so let's go ahead and start modeling. Here we can say Create Sketch and we're going to create a sketch on the ground plane. And we wanted it to be, here we get, reorient the view. We'll start off by making a center point rectangle. So we're making the middle panel, the uh, middle, the top plank. I, like I said, I don't know the terminology. Um, and we'll say it's 2200 mils long and we'll say it's 150 mil wide. Good stuff. Good. Okay. Next, we're going to extrude it upwards. So this is going to give the plank thickness. So um, we, we want to make it a bit more chunky than the original. So we'll say that it's 70 mil tall. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. Now, before we continue, we're going to save it. So we'll say Control S and we will call it wooden table. Now, very, very important to note that the first thing that we've created was a body within the, com uh, within the design. If we expand out this little list here, we can see bodies. And there we've got body one. Now that's not too convenient. What we want it to do is be a component. A component is like a, a separate part inside the design. And because this is going to have a bill of materials, we have to make sure that there are components to which the bill of materials can point. So um, we're going to uh, right click body one and we're going to right, uh, right click it and rename, uh, uh, click create components from bodies. There we go. And now we've got a component. And if we expand it out, it has its own solid bodies, which is body one. So let's go ahead and we'll rename this component. Uh, we'll call it uh, plank uh, middle. Beautiful. And we'll come along here and add holes and chamfers and features with that later. But um, in the laziest way possible, what we're going to do is we're going to take a copy of this design um, and we uh, of that uh, this component, and we're going to make a separate component now. I'm going to do the wrong thing first. We've got a plank and we want to duplicate it. We want to make a second plank. However, we want the sep second plank to be independent of the first plank. You know, we don't want them to be the same component, just two instances of the same component. We want it to be two separate components. Now, if we were to be very fast and select the plank and say, control C and control V, you know, to copy and paste another design, what you'll find is that the, it's just two instances of the same component. So if we were to say, for example, add a fillet onto here, it would apply to all the instances of the component. So we're not going to do that. We are going to undo and uh, uh, undo until we have just the middle plank. And I'll show you the trick to creating a new component copy. So we'll right click the plank here in the list and say copy. But rather than hitting control V for paste, we're going to right click and say paste new. 
And what this will do is it will duplicate it, but it will be a separate component entirely. So we'll say paste new, and we're going to drag it off to one side. And I'll say it's 160 mils to the left. Great. And now you'll find if we were to make a change to that original component, it doesn't actually propagate because they are two separate components. So now let's go ahead and give it a name. You'll find that I'll, I'll name the components as we go along um, because uh, it's, good, it's good practice. It makes it easier to keep track of everything. So we'll call this one plank and we'll say standard, standard plank. So there'll be two kinds of planks. There'll be the standard planks, which will make up the, the rest of the table and the seats. And then the middle plank, which is going to have that hole in it for the umbrella that this wonderful design has, uh, has included. Cool. Okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, we'll make a few more copies. Oh, no, we don't even need to. Well, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll make a few more copies. So Control-C, and this time we can just hit Control-V or Paste, um, because this will be a new, um, uh, a new instance of this design, uh, of this um, uh, component. So we'll say negative 160 to move it to the left. Good stuff, good stuff. Okay, and we're going to grab these two planks and we'll hit Control-C and Control-V, so copy and paste, and we're going to copy them to the end. And uh, just some quick maths, uh, 160, uh, 220, 480, 480 is going to be the gap. There we go, lovely. Okay, so interestingly, we have one uh, plank that is the unique middle plank, and then four instances of the uh, standard planks. And you could verify this by just uh, modifying one and find that they all modify in the same way. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, okay, cool. So we've got the planks, what comes next? Um, we will come in and later add in the, the chamfers and that hole, but uh, we'll make the meta structure for now. So what's the next component that we want to make? It, referring to our design, what we've got here are three separate cross beams. Uh, I think I've got some other views of this. There we go. Yeah, they look like this, and they look like this. And uh, yeah, there's uh, one wide one in the middle that has a hole in it with the, for the umbrella. And then two side ones that uh, that fasten the uh, the legs onto the structure. So let's go ahead and make a single sketch to do all of those. I, I like making master sketches and reusing that same sketch for a lot of things. You don't need to do it that way, but I, I find it's useful. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the origin by finding the origin in the model tree and clicking the little eyeball. Looking good. Next, we'll come along to create sketch and create a sketch on the origin plane. I can do this because I had the original plank centered about the origin. Useful. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hit uh, Create, Project, Include, Project. And I'm going to grab the cross section of the planks. This is useful because uh, we want to constrain the sketches of the, uh, of the cross beams uh, to this cross section here. Um, but I don't want them to actually participate in the geometry that we're creating, so I'm going to select them all and hit X. Um, or alternatively, you can make them construction by hitting uh, this one, line type construction. Good stuff. This just means that they're not going to participate in any extrusion that we create. Okay, so I'm going to make two sketches here. Um, the first one is going to represent the middle beam. No, it's one sketch for two, 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 two sets of uh, rectangles on this sketch. All right, so I've got the middle plank here, and we'll go ahead and we'll give it some dimensions. So we'll go ahead and give it a thickness of 70 millimeters and a width of, let's say, 360 millimeters. Is it correct? Who knows? <laughs> I can't go to work right now to uh, actually measure it. <laughs> All right, so we'll come along and we want to constrain it so that it is in line with the middle of the table. So to do that, we'll come along uh, in the constraints list and click midpoint. And now we'll click this line here and the origin there. Beautiful. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to make uh, this little beam. It's the same uh, height, but it's uh, it's about maybe half the thick, uh, width of it. So we'll come along, and as before, we'll make a rectangle, and we'll give it some dimensions. We'll say that this is 70, 
and we'll make the width of the, I don't know, maybe uh, 120. So maybe one third. Yeah, that looks about right. Um, this is not a parametric model. Uh, so tweaking parameters, I don't think will play too nicely with this one. If you're interested in a parametric version of this table, let me know in the comments and I'll make a whole video on it. We will design automate a table. It'd be great. Okay, so wait, 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 before the rant. All right, uh, so we'll go ahead and we are going to constrain this uh, to the bottom of the planks. Uh, now you could, if you were a barbarian, drag it over there like that, but that to be formal, we can create a coincident constraint between this uh, corner point here and the bottom of the table there. Beautiful, excellent. And uh, I'll give it some distance to the edge there. We will say, yep, yeah, that's 160. Looking good. Okay, now you might note I'm not doing um, the one on the other side, or at least I won't be extruding it from the other side. Uh, that's because we're going to be uh, mirroring the part later. It's, it's a rich tapestry, you'll see for yourself. All right, so we'll come along here to line. And I'm going to make a mirror plane, a uh, mirror line here, and I will mirror, um, mirror this uh, member, but it's really just so I can get uh, the distance later. So let's go ahead uh, to create a mirror. I've created a vertical line there, and we'll say create mirror, and then uh, we have to choose the objects that we're mirroring. So we'll pick this cross section here, and the mirror line here. There we go. And later, when we come to doing the, um, uh, how do you say, uh, copying the design, uh, these distances will interest us, but uh, it won't matter for now. Okay, we'll click Finish Sketch. And let's go ahead, I'm going to turn off the origin, we don't need it anymore. And we are going to extrude this sketch here. Now, we're going to change a couple of things about this. Um, the first thing is, by the default, the um, uh, behavior of extruding is to extrude out in one direction. We want to change the, um, the direction from one-sided to symmetric. There we go. And next, what we want to do is we want to specify the, um, the distance that it wants to cover. So uh, we will say it's 340 millimeters. That's 340 per side. Um, if you were to want uh, the whole length, you would have to do, uh, again, some quick maths in your head and say 680 millimeters symmetrical. Now we'll say 340 here. Ah, 340. Beautiful. Okay, cool. Uh, last thing, don't click OK because uh, the default behavior for the extrude command is to join material. And because we did it at the origin plane and that's touching that first component, it's trying to add um, material to that body. What we want to do is make a new component. We can come here to Operation and click New Component. There we go. And now when we make it, it will be a new component. Oh, that does look a little bit wide. We are going to go back into the sketch and bring it in. We'll say OK. And we will go back into the sketch here. And we are going to reduce the width maybe to, uh, let's say, uh, 240. Hey, it did end up being twice it. All right, good stuff. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, now I want to reuse that sketch to make the other plank here, oh, well, the other crossbeam. So we're going to turn on the sketch by coming to the sketches. If it's uh, minimized for you, just expand it out. Find sketch two and click the little eyeball to turn that sketch on. Beautiful. Okay, next we'll go and we'll hit extrude. So E for extrude. And we'll find that sketch there. And we are going to do what we just did. In fact, it's going to use the same numbers. We'll, for the extent type, oh, sorry, for the direction, we'll choose symmetric. Uh, for the distance, we'll say uh, 340 millimeters both sides. And we'll change the operation from join to new component. Excellent. Now, you might ask, oh, you know, why, why did you miss the other side? We, we could also extrude this one out, but that would make it a separate component, you know, two unique components. We want to reuse this component. We want to, we want to make it on the other side as well. So we're only going to model one, and then we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, copy it around later. So uh, let's go ahead and give them names. Uh, we will give this middle one, we'll say cross beam middle. Uh, if you're a table person and you're laughing at my bad terminology, please let me know. <laughs> I'm always keen to learn. Crossbeam side. Lovely. Okay. 
these are looking pretty good. Um, we'll add in the uh, the uh, little angles on them later. They're actually drafted if you're eagle-eyed. Yeah, okay, good stuff. All right, so next what we want to do is we want to create, let's go ahead and create these legs. Now, the legs um, hold up this cross beam here, the lower cross beam, um, and those lower cross beams hold up um, the uh, the seats, which happen to be exactly the same planks as uh, used up top, must be a, a cost saving thing. Um, we'll also notice that the seats happen to be vertically in line with the end of the table there. So, um, so we'll keep this in mind when we're designing our thing. Okay, so let's go ahead, uh, just one last reference for the Brainium. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, so what we're going to do is we are going to make a sketch and we're going to do it on the side of the plank here, uh, cross beam here. Good. And now we want to cut away all the material to the, the plane. If you were to rotate my view, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, if we hit the slice button, everything before the plane of the sketch will be hidden. So we'll click slice. Good. And now we are going to draw a sketch, but this is going to be a master sketch. We're going to draw the leg and the lower cross beam and uh, the cross sections of both the seats. Strictly speaking, not all of this is required, but it, it's useful when we come to uh, organizing our design. So let's go ahead. Uh, as before, we'll click project geometry. So create and we'll click project include, project and pick the side of this plank here. We'll select it all and hide the lines by hitting X or hitting the construction button. Okay. Next, we'll come along here and let's go and make a, um, well, I like to draw them arbitrarily and then adding constraints later. Even if your model's not fully parametric, it's always worth doing constraints. So say, for example, you might get something that looks right, like, oh, that looks approximately, but how do you know without the constraints? So for example, uh, we'll add in the constraint uh, parallel that will make this line here parallel with this line here. Very good. Now we know that they're parallel. Um, the inferred, oh, well, let's not trust inferred constraints. We're going to make sure that this line here is horizontal. And it says error, it's over constrained because it is horizontal because this line here happens to be perpendicular with that line there, which is vertical. Again, a rich tapestry. Lastly, we'll come along here and we'll add a coincident constraint. So we'll connect this point here to this line that we projected earlier. Good. So now the, uh, the, the top of the legs happens to correspond to the bottom of those uh, planks that make up the top. All right, so how tall is the table? Yeah, let's find out. Well, let, let's go ahead and add in a dimension that forces us to, to know. So um, I'm, I took some measurements on my room seat and uh, the, the, the leg height is 440 and then the distance between the, the table and uh, the, the thing is uh, about uh, maybe another 150 on top. So we'll say 450 uh, plus 150 and that's the total height of the leg. But yeah, from, from the top of the table. Oh, uh, that is, yeah, okay, uh, plus the thickness, yeah, but we'll make that 200. So all up, it's 650 tall. Next, how chunky are the legs? Let's find out. Uh, so we'll go ahead, uh, we'll add in a dimension here. Uh, the manufacturer will probably want some standard lengths or uh, thicknesses, so we'll say 80 or something like that. I assume that that's a, a good thickness for this leg. Oh, but we did want it chunkier, didn't we? Yeah, chunky is good. Let's go ahead and make it 90. Good. Okay. Uh, the last thing is the angle. Now, the angle wasn't decided, and we haven't decided that yet, but that's okay. What we're going to do is we are going to draw this, uh, I'll change the angle, this cross beam here, and we are going to uh, put placeholders for these uh, planks that make up the seat, and then we're going to use those to govern the angle of that leg. Good. Okay, so uh, the first thing is the cross beam, so I'm just going to make uh, an arbitrarily sized rectangle. And we are going to make a construction line and it's going to go from the middle of uh, that cross beam to the middle of the lower plank there. And we'll make it construction by hitting it and hitting X. Next, we'll get into roughly the right place. We'll select the line and we're going to make it vertical. And cool, this did two things. It, it aligned it in the middle uh, well, actually, it just did one thing. It, 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 it aligned the middle of the, the, the cross beam uh, to the, the, the design. So it's the same both sides. Do you see? Yeah, yeah, very good. Okay, 
So next, um, if we look at the cross beams, they happen to go out and then they hold up the, um, the two planks that make up the seat. So let's go ahead. Uh, we are going to draw two placeholder planks, one and two, and they will add in some constraints so that they're the same size, good stuff. Um, now, what was the size of our uh, planks? They were 150 wide. So we'll go ahead and make this one 150. And the gap between them was 10 millimeters. And the height, uh, they were chunky, so it was like 70? 70. 70. There we go. Good stuff. Okay, so, oh, and uh, if you want to align them, uh, we'll go ahead and add in a, let's go ahead and why not add in a collinear constraint because we're fancy uh, between the top of the plank there and there. Good stuff. Okay, so now um, from observation, we can see that the, this seat happens to line up uh, approximately with the, uh, the edge of the table. Whether that was intentional or just a nice feature, we don't know, but let's go with it for the moment. So we'll just change the table's uh, the legs angle cool and we'll come along here and we are going to add in a vertical constraint between the point at the corner of the table and this corner here there we go so they are vertically aligned with one another good stuff all right ah, okay next what we're going to do um is we are going to constrain the uh bottom of those seat planks with the top of the cross plane good stuff okay and finally we can uh we can put in a um a width constraint not a width constraint uh width dimension um to bring in uh the cross beam so we'll go ahead i um, just going to arbitrarily uh say that that is maybe 20 mils from the end good stuff okay um we'll put in the thickness as well let's go ahead and use the standard 70 millimeters all right so now we've got uh Indica indications of our cross section, uh, the height. So what's the seat height? We said earlier it was 450. So we'll type that in. Oh, their legs might get a bit squashed here. Wait, let me take a quick measurement. Legs will totally get squashed. Let's make this table a little bit taller. Huh? <laughs> we'll say um, it was 450 plus two, no, no plus 200, yeah, plus uh, 70. So we'll say, yeah, let's go ahead and say 300. There we go, that seems more reasonable and human dimensioned. Good stuff. Okay, so the last thing is, um, yeah, the angle of the seat. So what governs it? Well, let's have a quick look at the design. We can see that the, the seat happens to intersect closely with the bottom of the seat here. Now, I, I don't know what clearances they use or anything like that, but uh, just for sake of exercise, Let's go ahead and constrain the corner of our placeholder um, uh, planks, uh, seat planks to there. And the last thing governing the uh, the table um, angle is, uh, you know, how close to the middle the middle uh, this is allowed to get. So I honestly don't know what size. So it might be useful to just constrain it at an angle at this point, and we'll eyeball it. We'll say one twenty two degrees. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Sounds reasonable. 122 degrees. Maybe 135 degrees? No, no, too extreme, too extreme. What were we thinking? Uh, we'll say 122 degrees. Good. Okay. All right, so we've got a sketch and it captures, well, pretty much all the remaining elements. Well, most of the remaining elements. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, we are going to do uh, these components. So we've got our cross beam here and we've got the legs inside here. So these legs are going to come inward like this. Whoop. And again, I don't, I don't know what width each thing is here. We'll go ahead and we'll say that it's 70 millimeters. And as before, we'll change the operation from join to new component. Good stuff. And we're only going to do that once. We're actually going to pattern it around later. So we'll change the component's name uh, to leg. Beautiful. Okay, uh, now I want to reuse, reuse the sketch. Let's go ahead and uh, hit sketch three and hit the eyeball. And we will go ahead and make this cross beam down here. So uh, let's go, we'll hit extrude, grab the sketch profile, and we'll extrude it out negative 70 millimeters. Uh, as for the operation, let's go ahead and make it a new component operation. 
and bask in the success that we've enjoyed. Excellent. All right, so component six, uh, we will rename to uh, crossbeam lower. That'll do. Good. Okay. So uh, what's what's next? Well, we could go ahead and we can extrude out these planks, but that's that's an evil way of doing it. We want to reuse. So I'm just going to disable the sketch. We're going to reuse uh, the upper planks. So um, now, like I said, this isn't a parametric design. Copying it in this way, um, if you change the parameters later, we'll actually screw up the geometry because we're not actually constraining where those components are. But uh, for sake of exercise, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, I'll turn on sketch three and we're going to take a measurement. So we're going to hit I or the uh, inspect measure. And we're going to measure the distance between this side here and the end of this placeholder. So we can see that it's 310 millimeters horizontally. Vertically, we'll do the same. It's 300 mils. So let's go ahead. Uh, we'll hide that sketch. And we're going to say, uh, <clears throat> Uh, move copy, select this end plank, and we'll go ahead and we will ch -ch -ch for the uh, oops, we'll click trend, uh, create a copy, and we'll click uh, for translate. Uh, we'll, we'll click translate, create a copy, and we'll pick whoop 310 across, and whoop negative 300 down. Excellent. It feels wrong not doing all of this parametrically and perfectly. The uh, modifying the design might cause issues later. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and we are going to copy that seat, and we will. Oops. Uh, we will say copy the seat. So you hit the move copy. Um, choose the seat there. Click create a copy, and we'll drag it. And the period was one sixty from earlier. Good stuff, good stuff, excellent. Okay, we're nearly there, we're nearly there. So, um, what else is unique? We've got a beam that comes up uh, from, uh, and it comes up from the lower cross beam and then goes up and uh, holds up, props up the upper cross beam. So, let's go ahead and make that. Um, again, we can work from the origin. So, we'll turn on the uh, um, visibility of the origin and we'll create a sketch. And we'll create that sketch on the vertical plane there. Good. And as before, we will hit slice to get rid of all the material before the origin. Um, and this should be fairly simple. We're going to use the project geometry tool. So hit P or come to create, project, project, and click the cross section of the lower beam and the cross section of the upper cross beam. And here, let's go ahead. We will make a few sketch lines. Uh, again, I don't know the dimensions, so we're going to wing it. Uh, we'll create uh, lines from here and here and here to here. There we go. And we will make them, importantly, parallel. Yeah. Are they already parallel? It inferred the parallel constraint. Wonderful. Okay. Next, we'll come along and we'll give it some thickness. So let's go ahead and say uh, 35 mils thick. Yeah, 35 mils thick. That sounds like a pretty standard size. Good. I made a mistake. There's actually, um, how do you say, uh, a bit chipped off on the top and the bottom. So uh, we're going to go ahead and we are actually going to draw those in. So make a horizontal line here. I'll just draw a line. Oops. A line from there to there. Come on. Don't worry if it's not exactly horizontal at the start. Uh, there we go. And a vertical line here to here. Good. And we'll make those equal. That sounds better. And now we can drag them into place. And we'll make the distance to the corner equal there and there. It should work, but it doesn't. Let's find out. Equals there to there. There we go. All right, and we can disregard. We just won't extrude these bits here. Sorry, that was really crude, but uh, you know that's what these videos are like. I'm sorry. Uh, we should make a formal training course. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll click finish sketch. And what we're going to do is we are going to extrude um, this cross section here, and we're going to extrude it uh, symmetrically. So 
two sides symmetric. And the total width, oh, I have no idea. Let's go ahead and we will say maybe 80 mil. Maybe 70 mil. Oh, that's per side, so you have to say whole length. 80 mil. There we go. Looks good. Okay, that'll do. Um, change the operation from join to new component. And we're going to give this another name. We will say, we'll give it the name strut. Good stuff, good stuff. Okay. So we've got all the unique components that we need. I'm just going to turn off the origin here. Um, so let's go ahead and start copying, rotating, mirroring, blah, 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 whatever we're going to do. So uh, I'm going to show you a trick. Uh, we'll go along and we are going to um, uh, copy this uh, leg. Now we are going to rotate it around the origin um, so that we can get the opposite corners leg. So we'll say copy, so control C and control V. And now uh, we can create a copy of it. But, uh, we are also in a position that we can uh, rotate its position of the copy. So we'll click rotate and we'll click the origin here. So we'll expand out the origin and pick the vertical axis. Axis, in this case, it's the y-axis. And for the angle, we'll say 180 degrees. And there we go. We've got the leg at the other side. And you might say, oh, Frankie, this table is so, uh, so wonky. What are we going to do about it? So we're going to make more legs. Yeah. All right, we'll come along and we'll say copy. Well, firstly, we'll take a measurement. We'll measure using I the distance between that leg there and uh, there. Yeah. And we see 1570. So we'll grab the leg. We can choose it from the list here. Control C, Control V. And we can translate it 1570, negative 1570. Good stuff. And that looks, that looks right. And we'll do the same uh, We're using the first leg there. There we go, 1570. Now, very, very key. Um, these are four instances of the same leg. And from earlier, we'll uh, explain that's important because uh, when it comes to the bill of materials, you don't want leg one, leg two, leg three, leg four. You just want four instances of the same leg. Excellent. It's starting to really look like a table. This is fantastic. All right, uh, while we're in town, let's go ahead. No, we'll add the material later. We'll add the material later. All right, so next we'll come along and we're going to do the same trick for the strut. So we'll choose the strut, control C, control V, and we'll click rotate and we'll rotate it around the Y axis again. And we'll say 180. Good. And um, finally, yep, we need uh, this component here, the cross beam. So we'll say control C, control V. We'll rotate it about the axis, the y-axis, and the angle, 180 degrees. Excellent. And lastly, uh, these lower planks here. So we've got two lower planks. Um, uh, ooh, how good is my maths? Uh, ah, I'm just going to draw a sketch because it's too late for maths. Let's go ahead. I'm just going to project these bits of geometry, and I'm going to use it to tell me how far I need to translate um, the components. So I'll grab those and we'll say create mirror. Select the mirror line there. And now if I were to measure the distance between this line and this line, 1100. There. If you know the tools, you can afford to be lazy. 1100. Uh, so let's go ahead. We'll choose this. It occurs to me that we could have just rotated them about the axis. Ah, oh, it's too late for this. Uh, 1100. Let's do the rotation around the axis. So we'll say Control C, Control V, and we'll click Rotate. And the axis, we'll rotate it around the Y axis, and we'll say 180 degrees. Yeah, good. Now, uh, that is looking good, with the exception of this cross beam lower. Let's go ahead and do the same thing. We'll copy, paste it, and rotate it around the Y axis, 180 degrees. There we go. I think, yeah, that's all the components. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, we'll add in some holes and we'll change the materials now. So uh, let's go ahead and add in the holes first. So the hole, um, the middle hole here to hold up the umbrella uh, goes through both the uh, the top, uh, the middle plank and through this lower beam. So we'll come along here, let's create a sketch. And you could, you know, use a hole to do it, but I'm just going to draw a circle about the origin. Here we go. Uh, I don't know standard umbrella uh, hole sizes. 
Uh, I'm not employed by Big Umbrella. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that that's a 36 mil hole. Uh, we'll go ahead and extrude that circle whoop, all the way to the other side. And there we go. It's a hole that goes through both that middle plank and the um, that uh, cross beam in the middle. And note that the hole isn't propagated to the other components because these are a separate component. Good. Okay, what's next? Um, we need some holes uh, on the side here. So there are two holes uh, for the bolts of, for that cross jerk and uh, two up here. So uh, there's probably more underneath the chair and whatnot, but uh, well, we're going to be lazy about it. <gasps> Did I miss a component? No, surely I didn't. Surely? Maybe? No, no, it's okay. Um, okay, so we're just going to detail those holes. So let's go ahead, we'll make a sketch on the side here. And again, everything has been eyeballed in this uh, design. So we are just going to eyeball it ourselves. Um, we'll go ahead and we are going to draw a construction line between here and here and here and here. Select them all, make them construction by hitting X or the construction button. And let's go ahead and we're going to draw two circles, one there and one there. And we want them to be the same size, so we'll hit the equals constraint. Pick one hole and the other. And we'll make them the same size, so we'll say 8 mil. And again, let's pull some numbers out of nowhere. We're going to say that, that is 12 mil from the top there. And maybe, uh, I don't know, it's vertically in line. Uh, maybe, no, not vertically in line. Let's go ahead and make it 28 mil from the side there. Cool. So 28 mil and 12 mil from the top. Good stuff, good stuff. Now, uh, again, it's late. I'm too lazy to do it on the other side, so I'm just going to mirror it. So we'll cre say create mirror, choose our circles, and choose a mirror line, book, and click OK. And now we've got the holes on the other side. OK, so let's go ahead. We'll click finish sketch, and we'll say extrude. And we'll pick those two circles. Yeah, looking good. Excellent. Three, four. And we're going to say, uh, let's go ahead and say direction, symmetric, distance, all the way through. And it's just going to blast a hole through everything. There we go. Good. OK, next, what we want to do is we want to make these holes. Yep, these holes that go through the upper cross beam. Um, so very straightforward again. So we'll create a sketch on the side. And uh, as before, we'll go ahead and use the P button to project our relevant geometries. I like to do this every time. Use a window select to make them construction. And now we can go ahead and um, make a hole in the middle. So I'm just going to draw a diagonal construction line. There we go. And I'll draw a circle here and here. And as before, we'll make them equals uh, equal in size using the equal constraint. One, two. Great. And we'll use the midpoint constraint to constrain them to the middle of our construction lines. Good. OK, so add in a dimension. Let's go ahead. I'm going to say that that is a 14 mil bolt. Yep. Excellent. Good. And we'll say finish sketch. And now we're going to extrude both of those holes. And as before, we are going to say distance. Uh, well, we'll say direction, symmetric distance, all. However, we don't want the holes to go through the middle plank. So you might say, oh, no, we're ruined. We're going to have to make more features, more holes on the other side. Nah, nah, lazy is key. Let's go ahead and expand our objects to cut. And we will untick uh, this component here, body, uh, the cross beam. We'll say untick it there. And it means that that component won't participate in the cuts. Very useful. Good stuff, good stuff. OK, that's looking good. That's looking good. We'll hit Save, Control S. And now, uh, lastly, we want to um, chamfer most of these components. So we're going to go ahead, we'll click uh, Modify, Chamfer. And let's go ahead and, because it's going to be the planks, we'll go ahead and select planks there. And we'll add in a uh, 4 mil chamfer. Let's go ahead and add in more components. We'll hit the little plus and we'll pick, uh, yeah, these corners. 
There we go. And you only have to do one side because um, because uh, the other side will uh, it, well, it's the same component, isn't it? So it's important to remember that they're uh, the same component. Actually, these are going to have a uh, cool draft feature. So we don't actually need to chamfer those top and bottoms. Very good, excellent. Okay, looking good, looking good. Um, that doesn't need a chamfer, but maybe these corners could benefit from a chamfer. Good, good, okay, excellent. We're happy, we'll say okay. Oh, well, we gotta type in the value, four millimeters. There we go, and we got chamfers. Ugh, maybe it added too many chamfers. That's okay. All right, so we've got more chamfers than we when we want. Uh, oh, I missed some. Let's go ahead. We'll chamfer the legs. One, two, three. Oops. Modify chamfer. One, two, three, and four. And we'll add in four mil chamfer on the legs as well. There we go. Good stuff. Okay, so it's looking good. It's looking good. Um, oh, it occurs to me I didn't actually include bolts in my original uh, model. Maybe I'll, I'll do a quick follow-up video and add in some bolts to this. Oh, they could be standard bolts. The ideas, they're all flowing. Wonderful. Okay, so, um, yep, we've got some holes in here. Uh, and we are going to now assign a material. No, draft surfaces, draft surfaces. Uh, if you were eagle-eyed, you'd notice that these cross beams are actually drafted. They go down. Oh, they don't have chamfers. Ah, oh, all that chamfering work for nothing. Um, we are going to add in a draft on these surfaces. So we'll kind of come along here and say modify, and we'll say draft. And what this does is uh, it will angle that surface. So the first uh, surface that we're choosing is the pull direction. So it's not the one that we've modified, it's the reference angle. And then next are the faces that are being drafted. So we'll click that surface there, we'll type in 15 degrees. There we go, and we can see that that surface is drafted. We'll repeat the same thing for the middle. Oh, you would notice that because it's the same component, the drafted surface is there as well. Okay, so we'll come along, uh, we'll say modify, and we'll say draft, and we'll pick this surface here and this surface here. And again, modify, draft, reference angle, that surface, good stuff. And finally, the back end, modify, draft, that surface, and that surface. Um, it turns out that the uh, these were also drafted. I completely forgot to do that in my original model. Let's go ahead and draft those in as well. Good stuff. Modify, draft, pick this and that, and excellent. And then we've got our drafted angles. It's looking pretty good. With the exception of one too many chamfers, it's, it's looking good. Um, oh, bet that. Okay, no, no, no. We've gone mad with the chamfers, but we're going to add in more chamfers anyway. We'll go ahead and we'll select those faces. There we go. And we'll make a four millimeter chamfer. Good. Oh no, that was that was a terrible idea. Undo, undo. Okay, that's enough. Enough. The madness ends. We got a nice chunky table. So uh, let's go ahead. We'll hit save as always, and we're going to assign a material. So uh, let's go and expand out, modify, and we'll come along to physical material. And I don't know the first thing about woods. Uh, wood is good. That's that's about as much as I know. Where is my? Oh, if your um, if your dialog doesn't show up, just check that it isn't hiding here in the corner. Do you see? It's a expandable little thing. I'm gonna click this little arrow to make sure it sticks out. Okay. Uh, so I, I don't know woods. Uh, I, I I applied one earlier. Uh, it was oak. I think oak is good. Uh, now if you were to click and drag, you can select a, and you can make a component that material. So say for example, that's oak. If you want to apply it to all the materials at once because you're lazy, uh, go ahead and drag the material to the top of the design. And there we go. We've got our design in oak, which I'm sure is a reasonably priced wood. Very good. Okay, good. We got our design. So let's go ahead. We are going to make a drawing and a bill of materials. Now, if, if, if I thought I had more, it would be like a drawing video and we'd learn how to do dimensions and whatnot. But this is just a quick one on how to make a bill of materials. So uh, to make a drawing, we'll come along to the top left where it says design. And we're going to go ahead and come to drawing and click from design. Um, now the contents, we'll leave it as full assembly for the drawing. Uh, we're creating a new one for the template. You pick your template if you've got one or otherwise from scratch. 
And for the structure, let's go ahead and choose all levels. Not that that matters, there's just one level for this bill of materials. And we'll click OK. Good stuff. There we go. And now uh, we've got our um, table. So uh, yeah, uh, you can click and drag a general view. Sorry, I know this isn't so much of a, a drawing video, but go ahead. Um, so if you want to change the scale, oops, you double click it and you can change the scale here. I'm going to eyeball it one to 14. Looks good. Uh, we'll make some projected views by coming to the projected view icon. Click our table and place a view there and here and one isometric one like so. And it turns out that that is way bigger than I anticipated. So we'll double click our home view and we'll change the scale back with the tail between our legs. We'll make it one to 18. Good stuff. Okay, so bill of materials, how, where does it go? How do we do? Easy, we'll come along here and click table. And now we're going to place arbitrarily that um, table. And this table is going to be a bill of materials, wonderful. Now, uh, I was lazy and didn't add in descriptions for any components. I will actually show you how to do that. Um, if you wanted to uh, hide the description panel, all you need to do is mouse over your parts list, double click, and then untick description. And it will get rid of that. Okay, so we'll come along here. Let's go and drag it into the corner there. And oops, uh, easier before you drag it into the corner, resize it by clicking and dragging these little handles. Good stuff. There we go. And drag it into the corner. Okay, and next what we want to do is add in bubbles. Uh, it, it actually does add in the bubbles automatically, uh, the balloons. Um, but I find it's always better to, to do it yourself. Um, just because uh, you can communicate very clearly uh, by doing it intentionally. So to add in a, a bubble balloon, uh, go ahead and click the balloon button. And if you click a component, you can draw a balloon. You'll notice that these two are the same component, so they'll have the same number in the, in the balloon. The balloons correspond to items in the bill of materials. So say for example, we have uh, item two, which is the standard plank. There are eight of those. There is one middle plank. There are two side cross beams. It's beautiful. So we'll go ahead, we'll quickly add in some balloons and we will capture it all. There we go. So add a balloon for each of the components. Uh, it's useful to use uh, different angles uh, if you can't see very clearly which component is being referred to. So there we go. Lovely. I think that's it. One, two, three, four. Oh, four again. Four. Oh, no, that's the more clear one. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, good. Those are all the components that we've got here. Lovely. Okay, and I'm just going to double click that and make it shaded. Beautiful. Okay, so uh, we'll hit save and we'll make that, uh, we'll call it wooden table and that will be a drawing and it happens to sit right next to our design in the data panel. Now uh, to uh, modify the, um, to modify the uh, title block, we'll come along here and we can double click clients. Uh, well, we can double click the field and we can say client, you, the viewer, happy Friday. Um, uh, put in a t uh, table, uh, table design that I stole from a park. Good stuff. Revision, revision zero, date of issue today. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. It's not that date. I'm just confusing you. Okay. Uh, lovely. Uh, so that's how you make a parts list. Uh, I mentioned earlier about uh, monkeying around with the description. We can do that. We'll come along here to uh, back to our oops, back to our table, and say that we wanted to add a description uh, in these planks. These two, uh, these planks in particular, because they are, I guess, uh, interfacing with people um, and a soft skin to deburr them to make sure. Not a proper way of using a description user. You would, uh, you know, include that detail in your drawing. Um, but we'll come along here and we will say, uh, grab the plank, right click it and say properties. And here we're going to uh, pick description and then we'll say uh, D bird wooden plank. And we'll say with hole. 
And I'll repeat the process for the other plank, D bird wooden plank, but without a hole. Save. And when we go back to our table, if we, uh, let's go ahead and we'll expand out our parts list first. So we'll drag the parts list here, double click it, click description, drag it back into the corner. Despair that our design is not fitting on our drawing. Oh, the joys of drawing. You wonder why I do so many modeling videos, not many drawing videos. Huh? Huh? Now you know. Okay, uh, you'll notice that the descriptions are blank. Uh, go ahead and update the drawing by clicking uh, the reference update button. And ta-da, it brings in the description that we just talked about. Wonderful. Okay. It's late. I'm going to pack it in. I hope you learned something. Uh, I hope you learned something good from us. And uh, yeah, if you have any other ideas for videos, please put them in the comments below. Um, and happy modeling. See you next time. Bye.